Expo dorm that students will design and build. I want students involved in every aspect of this. I want them to help in, th in thinking about the buildings that they're going to live in and where they're going to have a major stay. I want our college, in fact, to be a college where you come and you get that kind of hands-on experience. Unity College, by the way, is not a crunchy granola college. We have those sorts, and I love them, but we also have a lot, we have first generation students who want to hunt and fish and ride their snowmobile. That's a stereotype, I understand. You can own a gun on campus. We have a very strong hunting culture on campus. Coming up, we have our wild game dinner, where the students serve an elegant six course meal that includes beaver, moose, bear, and you name it. And then a week after, we have an alternative foods organic fair, because we have one of the most interesting organic agriculture communities uh, in the country, really, in, in Mid Coast, Maine. Something called Mosca, the Maine Organic Farmers and Growers. So we do all that stuff. We do it all. And they all hang out together. It's very interesting, very cool. These are lower, middle, and middle class students. During uh, hunting season, 4.30, 5 a.m. in the morning, October, November, students are all out getting ready to shoot duck, whatever the heck they're going to do. Not all of them, but, you know, interesting percentage of them. We have a great woodsman's team. We have a great archery team. Very different kind of student body. It's, it's, it's exciting. And uh, it makes a big difference. And, and we, it's a, although we're getting great students now, it's also a hands-on student body. There's a lot of students who like to get involved in these hands-on kinds of projects. And I think that matters anyway. It doesn't matter who you are. Um, we are guided by this notion of, of nine integrated elements of a sustainable culture. I'm going to quickly tell you what these all are. Uh, they involve community, they involve infrastructure, and they involve learning. Those are the three, I guess, circles. I like circles and sets and all that. And I don't have a you know, diagram to make a Venn diagram for you right now, but think of all of these as interconnected. And I'm going to tell you what each one of these is and, and, and how we deal with them. We're not getting any movement. Where's the wonderful uh, tech person? Oh, that's because I'm pushing the wrong down button. <laughs> so we just have to step back, relax, remember what you're doing, and it makes it really easy. Okay. Infrastructure refers to energy, food, and materials. This is what most sustainability discussions tend to be about, is infrastructure. And this is what most sustainability coordinators wind up doing. By the way, my sustainability coordinator reports to me, reports to the president. I'll say more about that in a minute. Um, our 2020 master plan is about achieving zero carbon, carbon meeting the goals of the ACUPCC. We won't get it done by 2020. But energy, we refer to the carbon budget, energy sources, and all sorts of conservation efforts. Uh, by the way, that's, that's where I live, that place on the right. It's called the Unity House. And um, that's an interesting story. It's worth telling you about for a moment. As you, your president lives on campus, we didn't have a place for the president to live, so I instead got a housing allowance. I went to the board and said, instead of using that housing allowance to, for me to buy another house, I have a house in New Hampshire. I'm going back there, you know, eventually. Why don't we use it to build a really cool house that's zero carbon platinum lead where I can bring donors and we can get national attention? And the board loved the idea. And it cost a little more than they thought it was going to cost, but that was mostly because of the siding work and the landscaping. But that's where we live now. That, that's the centerpiece for the campus. And I, eventually I want that to be the kind of building that all the, the new dorm, all the new buildings. Now, the solar array is not something you can necessarily do everywhere on campus. But this has been amazing. So I have people who visit the campus just because they want to see the house, and then I get them interested in the whole sustainability conversation. So that was one example of how you can lead by how you live and what you do. And that's made an enormous difference for us. So energy, if we're looking at it, we've got some buildings on our campus that are just about the worst energy hogs you can possibly imagine. We have a building that was built, our college is only about uh, 40 years old. I mean, it, it, it started in the late 60s, and it was not one of these colleges that was well endowed from the beginning. So we have a building, our activity center, which has our gym, so-called gym, and everything else, that was built in an era where the way you got the snow off the roof was oil was so cheap that you just burn more oil so it would be hotter and all the snow would kind of get removed. So when, it, when, it's, so when I, people were talking to me about how can we better insulate this, I looked into it, and I can't because if I did more to the roof, the rest of the building didn't have enough to keep it going. 
So there's nothing I can do other than just let the thing ride out. But I don't have any capacity right now to build anything new. So that's how bad it is. So we do the best we can with what we have. Meanwhile, the building functions reasonably well, but it's not exactly what I would call a, you know, a 2010 state-of-the-art energy-efficient building. But we have better buildings than that, like the Unity House. Food is another aspect of the infrastructure challenge. Everyone cares about what they eat. We have worked very hard in the cafeteria to try to get more local, more organic food. I have a meeting this summer with other Central Maine college presidents to see if we can do bulk buying, if there are ways that we can all work together. I think you can have an enormous, make an enormous di difference uh, based on what you do and, and how you operate and how you act in the cafeteria. Not only does it make sense from a sustainability point of view, but it makes health sense from a health and nutrition point of view. Materials is another aspect of infrastructure. We look at the full cost of raw resources and construction processes. You, you, do, you not only do that when you build something, you do it when you look at all procurement policies. Every single thing that comes in and leaves campus. You, uh, and, and by the way, cost for all of these things is skyrocketing downwards now as we have all kinds of interesting new possibilities. So now you'll see what I'm going to do. I hope, I hope I'm okay time-wise. We lay out the full picture. Then we look at um, infrastructure, and then the, the three aspects of infrastructure, and then each one. Um, some tough questions related to energy. How do we heat and cool our buildings, move our people and their goods from one place to another, and power our machines without simultaneously altering the biosphere? So that, that, by the way, is the utility room in the Unity House where I live. Um, so there are all kinds of ways that we do that. Full cost accounting, technical innovations, renewable energy sources, rigorous conservation and retrofitting, and full transparency of the energy life cycle. The most uh, efficient way to move forward is rigorous conservation and retrofitting. That's the best payback on the dollar, and it's the it's, 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 it is the lowest hanging fruit, in fact. But that's a place where just about every campus can make an enormous difference, and every home can make an enormous difference. Food, same thing. You've you got to invite the hard questions. That's the education, educational part. Where does your food come from? How much energy is used in its production and distribution? What policies will support more sustainable food operations? How does the history of the food we eat reflect ourselves in this place? Um, Maine's amazing for local food. There's great locally grown meats. There's great locally grown vegetables. We can do phenomenally well from April to October. Unfortunately, there aren't a lot of students around now. <laughs> So that which raises also questions about why don't we have students during the summer? Uh, because of the old agricultural models, they need to. That's why we ha don't have school in the summer. We need to work in the fields. Well, that's not really the case anymore. So we're trying to make the campus look. That's a be we have beautiful gardens all over campus now. If you come and visit us in June or July, you'll see all kinds of gardens. We have, uh, and it's not just food producing gardens. We have wildflower gardens. It's a very inexpensive way to beautify a campus and to get students involved. We had a student who designed a wildflower garden. She did it for an independent study. She did a wonderful, wonderful job. It's absolutely stunning. It, it, it gave so much pleasure to people who saw it all the time. So grow food everywhere, bisect lawns with garden strips and permaculture shrubbery, serve local organic food as a stimulus to the regional market, marketplace, and so on. Make the campus a site for bioregional experiments in food preparation and production. We have a new program called Veggies for All. We're working with a local uh, community organization and a lot of the extra food that we produce goes to the food pantries of the very, very poor Waldo County, where we are. Maine's a very poor state once you get past the coast from Portland. Interesting questions about materials. Where, what's the supply chain? How do we minimize ecological impacts? Can we find materials that are recycled, reclaimed, and reimagined? And so one way you do it is to expose the full cost of building materials, not just, not just what it costs you in dollars and cents, but what is the full cost to the planet? and creatively use. This house that you're looking at, the Unity House, is almost exclusively recycled material. Again, if you ever come up there, give, give us a call. We'd love to show you around. This is where I live. This is all almost exclusively recycled and or local material in this house. Next is, is the community challenge. Governance, investment, and wellness. This is just as important. You do the infrastructure stuff, but you don't do this, it's going to be short term. If you do this, but not the infrastructure stuff, then people will say, well, you're not walking the talk. But I find, and of course, this is where I can have the most impact and influence now, given my position, because I am, after all, chief executive, this is really crucial. 
So uh, again, we're going to have some more examples of each of these, but governance, all decision-making processes and stakeholders have to be sifted through the sustainability filter. And we'll say more about how you do that. Is every person on campus involved in moving the campus towards sustainability? Is there a clarity of purpose regarding accountability, responsibility, and agency? At Unity, everyone who works there has sustainability initiatives built into their job description. I also have tried to really create a transparent governing process, including a transparent budget process. And it is open, and sometimes it comes and bites me in the butt, because it is so darn open. But I want everyone to know where our dollars are spent and where they go. And no, every question that a person asks can be answered, except necessarily what a person makes. But other than that, here it is, ready for you to look at, because I need everyone together with this stuff. And if, there's, if people believe there's something hidden or there are secrets, it's just not going to work. Even though, as I said, sometimes it does bite you about. Investment. Even though we only have a $2.6 million endowment, well, $2.6 million, if that was my money, it would be a lot. It's money that goes somewhere. Are we, are we being careful with our investments? And we are. We're, we're moving a lot more of our investments into so-called green, uh, green possibilities. But the college, but more than that, is our college a multiplier for regional sustainability efforts? If a local farmer comes to me and says, I'd like to sell you my local beef, we can make a difference. If maybe four or five colleges will take that farmer's local beef, that farmer can stay in business. That's really important to me, is to find a way, especially in a struggling economy, for our college to serve as a regional, regional multiplier. Now, uh, you, you've got 2,000 here, and I, you have a pretty profound economic impact on this region. Take a college like Arizona State, $75,000 students. It's a market. Well, they, they are very active, by the way. ASU is doing amazing things around sustainability. Decisions they make at that level have an enormous regional investment multiplier. Do we su support sustainable businesses, et cetera? And finally, wellness. How many higher education administrators or faculty are constantly complaining about being stressed out? I mean, well, it's part of the, you know, it's part of the style. It just is. Now, wherever you go, it is. And I get that. Um, but the fact is, we really, if we don't promote healthy living, so I ride 2,000 miles on my road bike between April and October or November when it's possible. I've really focused on wellness at the college. People see it. I go out with three of my senior staff every day at noon. We do 15 miles. And it's unbelievable what started to happen. The number of people who see it and model the behavior and say, he's a guy 60 and he does this, you know? So we have other people far younger than me who realize what's happened. But I think, oh, it's again, I'm not saying you should do this on your campus or wherever it is. I'm just saying that all of these things count together and matter. They really do. And it might be that that's your particular gift to the campus is showing how wellness is part of a sustainable lifestyle and, and approach to things. Okay, now again, we go to the specifics, then we're going to do the community one, and then we'll be done. Tough questions around governance. Does the how does the organizational culture support and implement sustainability as a way of life? What's the relationship between sustainability and participatory governance? How do you use sustainability as a means to motivate, unify, and inspire an entire campus? I'm not going to answer those questions right now. I will say, though, that my sustainability coordinator reports to me, and that's one way that I exalted that position. So I, I, I don't have any other policy advisors. He's my guy. He's like my science sustainability guy. And I said to him, you need to make sure that we reduce carbon emissions and meet the you know, demands of the ACU PCC, and I want you to mobilize the student body. There's nothing more important than that. They're your best workforce. It serves for retention. It's a great thing to do, and they have phenomenal ideas. They're going to help you more than anyone you know. So that's what we're doing. We're just mobilizing the student body so they can become our sustainability workforce. Not, it's, of course, it's not as hard as a school like Unity because they come ostensibly for the environmental reason. But still, you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. Responding to the challenge, aligning sustainability goals with a structure for a governance that's reflected in the workforce, faculty, student life, and curriculum, etc. Reasonable but firm guidelines regarding procurement, commencement, transportation, and other events or operations. We've done a great job with commencement. Uh, many schools have. And again, we learn from other schools. We're not better than anybody else. If we see something another school is doing that's great, we want to do it. Sure, I mean, sure, we compete. There's kind of an arms race of sustainability going on because we want to attract good students. But we are also in it together. Investments. Some of these are, some of these are just elaborations of uh, 
we were taught what we were talking about before. We really want to work with business leaders to identify the technical skills, life experiences, attributes, and knowledge that will best support the new sustainability professions. That's really important. So we try to, whenever possible, talk to business leaders. What are you looking for? If, if you were going to hire a sustainability coordinator, what are the skills that you need? By the way, the big growth area in sustainability, as I mentioned before, is in the two-year colleges. Why? Because it's a great way for us to get our workplace moving. But if you, a lot of the people at the agency level at the, of, of the Obama administration, a lot of people at the agency level get this. They get the importance of the green economy. They get the importance of getting the two-year schools actually outfitted so they can get folks involved in this sort of thing. Because we're getting, we're getting totally outclassed by China and by the Europeans. I mean, this is, this, we, we promised Friedman, Hot, Flat, and Crowded, phenomenal book about how the, for national security and for, the nat and for the global economy, the best thing we can do is move into this green jobs arena because it's coming. And a lot, of the, a lot of businesses get it. It's very important stuff. And it's, get, it's getting lost with all these other things that are going on and all the, you know, all the hype that surrounds American public politics. But really, the, the, where, the, where the, you know, fire hits the road, rubber hits the road, whatever it is, is with this green jobs future. It's very important in my view. Okay. Wellness. Uh, do we promote healthy living? We do so much on campus with smoking cessation. We do so much with obesity. We constantly, our, our wellness and people, our student life people, are, we have phenomenally interesting kinds of little tournaments. And we're in remote Maine. Let me tell you, you're in Portland. Two hours, we're two hours from Portland, and it's not a heck of a lot in between. I mean, we are way the heck out there. Um, and during the winter, it's a long time. So we, we organize everything we possibly can. We have a wonderful search and rescue squad. We've got about 15 students who are part of a club. If someone's lost in the main woods, our students go and find them. Um, and you name it. You name it. We do really interesting things, but they're all related about wellness and community well-being. The result is our incident reports in the last couple of years have skyrocketed downwards. Our drinking problem, every college has got it, skyrocketed downwards. We still have these things that show up. But because of the outdoor emphasis and because we're working so hard on wellness, we're doing much better than we once did. Our students have the same stresses that you all have. It's no different. It's no different at all. But getting your hands, hands dirty helps. Um, so that's all I'm going to deal with this, other than you can read it for yourself. And don't you hate it when people read the PowerPoints anyway? So the thing is, this, a lot of people are using this PowerPoint now, besides me. So this, uh, this is an essay that I wrote, and uh, by the way, I'll, if anyone wants the hard copy, give me a card and I'll send it to you, as well as other stuff about unity. But so, you know, this way everyone has the whole thing together. Here's the learning challenge. That's the third part. We had infrastructure, we had governance, now we have learning. It's on the level of curriculum, what we teach and what we learn, aesthetics, what the place looks like, and finally interpretation, how you describe what you do. And what do visitors to campus see? This is the part that actually, quite frankly, interests me the most because ultimately and I'm, I'm an educator. And this is, the, this is an area where I actually believe we have the most work to do. On the curricular level, we, are, we have so much work we have to do. On my leadership, as a, as a member of the ACU PCC Steering Committee, we're going to be meeting in October with other college presidents to do as much as we possibly can to try to influence curricular changes in colleges around the country. And there's a lot of good leadership there. David Shy, the retiring president of Furman, uh, Michael Crow of Arizona State, and many, many others. A lot of two-year college presidents as well. It's really trying to figure out what we can do in terms of really moving the, the academics further so that anyone who goes through any college situation has a better understanding of some of these issues. Um, aesthetics, and I'll tell you about more when we get to the slide. Same with interpretation. Need my glasses. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Very typical Unity College students. I teach a course called The Future of Life on Earth for, it's an honors class for freshmen. And there we are, that's on the far left, um, doing, doing, doing what we do. Um, there's, here's some questions to ask, especially for the faculty and for the students in terms of what you want, what you demand. Does the curriculum provide hands on experiences of living, implementing, and designing a sustainable campus? Are sustainability principles thoroughly integrated into all aspects of the curriculum? We believe that you respond to the challenge by modeling what you teach, 
by integrating sustainability and climate change into all academic programs, and so on and so forth. We want to make sustainability a seamless part of the everyday life of students, faculty, and staff, to the point where they kind of say, oh, no, that, not that again. Oh, no, not that again. Just shut up already. You know. Redundancy is okay. It's that important. And you do it over and over again, and eventually it becomes a habit. We have contests in our dorms. Every conceivable way you can, you can name, we do ways to constantly remind our students about why this is important. Now, do we make mistakes? Are we filled with contradictions and hypocrisies? Of course. I flew down here, didn't I? I mean, part of the interesting dynamic of all of this, and I hate to hold it as a now people, and I hope I'm not coming across that way, is that we all have imperfections in how we pursue this. But that doesn't mean we're necessarily doing the wrong thing. You just have to be vigilant about those imperfections and try to address them. But we do live in the 21st century global economy, and that's a reality. Aesthetic, um, wherever possible, we try to have vivid, imaginative, and interesting exhibits in our projects. We've got one person who teaches art at our campus. He's amazing. He's just, he was just got voted among the top 60 artists in Maine. Um, and I said to him, Ben, consider the whole campus your, your, uh, as a canvas. Do whatever you want. You want to do really interesting artwork that conveys environmental and sustainability messages, you just go ahead and do it. You just have one thing you've got to do, and that is check with facilities. Otherwise, you're going to get us both in a hell of a lot of trouble. That facilities guy is great, by the way. He's learned so much. He loves this stuff. He is going to retire. Um, tough guy. He's going to retire. And then he said, you know what? I'm learning so much with all of this that I'm going to stick on for a while because it's been great. So we've got all these projects on campus now, odd sculptures, flags. We get one of our dorms, this kind of an unattractive building, we're going to turn into a big graffiti wall on one side of it. So. I think that's great. And, you know, again, and I don't mean this disrespectfully, I don't have to worry about colonnades. I can do this at my college. But there might be other really interesting art projects that you can do here that create and send a message. And uh, what a wonderful way for the art program here to get involved in the sustainability initiative. Finally, I don't know, it looks like a couple of pictures didn't get in there. I don't know what happened to them. But interpretation is the other aspect of it that's really important to us. And that is when someone visits campus, so many people will visit this campus. I mean, just today, sitting in the little conference room, I noticed an admissions door. You just, you know, you see someone walking backwards. Oh, yeah, it's one of those. So you have countless visitors coming through here. What an opportunity to educate people about what Washington and Lee is doing. So anytime you have a chance to say what it is you're doing or how you're making a difference, it ought to be done. And that's something that's inexpensive and not so hard to do. So we do as much interpretation as we possibly can. And uh, we teach a lot of classes in interpretation. And uh, we try to focus them on the campus as we can. Very quickly, this is where I live. It's nice, isn't it? I can't wait for that green to come back. I guess it's coming soon. But, uh, you know, this, this has been a wonderful experience for us. And I think it's it's too late in our talk to really go into the details of what this house is all about, but I'll just show you some of the pictures very quickly. Um, we wanted an affordable model for future construction on campus. Um, we want to display energy efficiency through, through our metering and, and, uh, and such. As I said, we have countless tours through it. This is part of something called Open Built Prototype. Uh, it was all built with zero waste and then shipped. It's a, it's a modular construction. Uh, for those of you who are interested in this kind of thing, our, our various R values are just unbelievable. You are absolutely unbelievable. This is a tight, this is one tight house. And um, again, we try to use, you know, recycled materials. It's a small house. It's 1,900 square feet. For our, I mean, for a presidential residence, that's actually rather small. And, um, you know, it's another example. It's the total cost was about 450 So these sorts of things can get done. These are all recycled kitchen cabinets, someone was throwing them out. Yeah. And so we found them and we wound up using them. So um, flexible living and dining spaces that other president and his family can come in and move the walls around if they want and make some changes. So uh, our actual, the private part of this is quite small. 
um, and the public parks large. I've had board meetings there. I've had faculty retreats. Um, we've had all sorts of things go on at the house, and it's a, it's a really a great thing to do. So, thanks for taking the time to be here. I hope I gave you some ideas and something of an integrated vision about where this all might head. We have some very nice materials that come out of Unity. If you'd like either a copy of this paper or some of those materials, leave me your card or your address, and I'll make sure that you get them. So thanks very much. We'll stick around. If I know I see lots of people needing to go because they have classes and don't want you to feel like you shouldn't. So go, have fun, and I'll stick around and answer any questions privately. Thank you.